That is a stunning piece of wood. I would have never thought in a million years that that would there have ended up coming out. I don't even see it very well because the it's so shiny the uh, lights reflect off of it. But So this is the project, um, I'm calling it my prehistoric bowl as you can see from the title. The reason being is because um, it's old, chunky and rough around the edges just like me. So, yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, nothing else to say really, it's failed, no good. <laughs> so, I'll see you guys next week, fresh new project, one that works, and take care, speak to you soon, and bye for now. great start oh there we go hello <laughs> that's a good start isn't it anyway, welcome all thank you very much for coming and joining us for our sunday lunchtime live i uh, hope you're all well and uh as you all know i hit 3,000 subs so a massive thank you to all you guys who have constantly supported the channel and um have come back week after week to support the channel so the channel has grown gradually um so thank you um as i always said that i will be given and doing a 3k giveaway so um that's what we'll be doing um, i'll be announcing that in a minute but first things first, I just want to quickly show what we did Friday night. Um, the first ever early morning live, myself, Brian Hart, Brian from Hartwood and Lewis from Quandry Craftsman. Uh, those are my airworms. So thank you to those guys for keeping up, well, especially Brian, for being up at stupid o'clock in the morning to do the live with me. And um, this is what we turned, a stunning new bowl infilled with resin in the back. Um, I'm actually doing this as a giveaway for the guys over the pond um, as a thank you for turning up and uh, watching the video or coming into the live. So any ones who are from over the pond, unfortunately, this is for over the pond only. Um, you need to go into Friday or early Saturday mornings live. I have put in the description what you need to put in the comments to be entered into this. And then when we do the next live, uh, which will be most probably the 25th of March or 26th of March, um, we will announce the winner to give this away. So a massive thank you to everybody who came over. And uh, I really it was a really good turnout, to be perfectly honest. It really was a good night. Um, we had a good turnout. We had some new faces in the chat, which was really nice. And uh, we all had a good laugh. So hopefully everybody enjoyed it. So giveaway. Um, 3,000 subs. It's taken me, seems to have took me forever to get to the 3,000 subs. Um, but I know that obviously it doesn't happen overnight. And all you can do is keep progressing and progressing and trying to put out more interesting content to create the um, the entertainment for people to come and subscribe and like or watch, I say. So as I announced a couple of weeks ago, that I will be giving away something on the 3,000 sub giveaway that nobody else has got other than three people. That's myself, Brian at Hartwood Turner, and Lewis Golden at the Conduit Classman have got these. Um, I'll just show you what we've been looking at. So... 
this is what I've come up with. Everybody knows that I do. Oh, the camera's frozen. But anyway, everybody knows that I do the Chuck Buddies. So what I've come up with is what they call a buddy, what, we, what I'm calling the buddy range. So on the top row, you can see that we've got the jaw holders. And then below that, we've got the faceplate holders. And then obviously, we've got the chuck key holders, the Morse taper two holder, and then the small, what I call the small tool holder, which basically for your chuck keys, knockout bars, torque wrench, I mean, Allen key, sorry, and whatever you want. And then I've also done this for myself, not really for anybody else, but um, that's the Robert Sorby texture and tool holder that I've manufactured or that I've designed for myself. So let's go back over to a camera that's actually live and not a photograph. <laughs> so overhead cam. So what I'm actually. No, don't, there you go. So what I'm actually giving away in the giveaway. Is this. So I'm giving away a jaw holder, a faceplate holder, and if you and a chuck buddy of any size that you require. Um, the sizes I do are M33, uh, inch by eight, inch and a quarter by eight, three quarter by sixteen. I've also now got ready to produce the inch and a half by six and the inch and a half by eight. So what I'm doing is I'm giving away two sets of these. But what I will do is the, the one who's drawn out the hat first, I'll also include some other parts, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. So that's what I'm giving Perhaps away. I'm going to now put, sorry, I don't agree with two. It needs to be three. It's a 3,000 giveaway. All right, three. Okay, three, three sets. sets. <laughs> three sets. But the first one drawn out the hat, I will give away some other pieces that are on my board, but I'm not going to tell you what they are until the winning day. So three sets of these I'm giving away. So these are magnetic. Unfortunately, these don't work with the Axe Minister jaws because obviously Axe Minister jaws are stainless steel. So these are mainly for Nova Record Power and all the other mild steel chuck jaws. Uh, I've designed it so the magnets actually hold the jaws in position and then the actual unit is screwed to the wall with the screws that go through the middle of the magnets. So you will get everything you see on that board other than the board. Um, so three sets of those and like i say first out of the hat i will add extra stuff which i will announce on the day we draw i'm going to let it run for two weeks and then what we'll do is in two weeks time we will what's two weeks sunday Nick? two weeks today please 13th of march so i will announce on the 13th of march or we should i say not i we will announce on the 13th of march who the winners are and then um We'll be giving away the sets. So, with that out of the way, let's get rid of this camera. Seems it's frozen. We don't need it anyway. Oops. So, what I'm doing today is, um, I don't know if a few weeks ago you you watched my video where I turned the vase and then you colored told it. them how they enter the drawer. Well, we're waiting for a comment from you. Oh, it just needs to be something like. Well, no, Nick's going to decide what the comment comment is. Um, so Nick's going to give. We're going to have a phrase that Nick's going to work through the live. We'll give her a half hour to think about it. She only had all morning, but we'll give her another half no, hour. I had all morning. You just threw it at me. Go, well, can you think of a hashtag? Yeah. What so we're going to hashtag buddy range. There you go. That's the hashtag. So after the live in the comments, anybody who wants to be entered into the prize draw in two weeks time, the 13th of March, I will put it in the description after the live. Leave a comment on the video after the live, which has obviously been processed. Hashtag. No, not hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag. Hashtag buddy range. And then after two weeks, we will select the winner. It's across the whole country, the whole world. I don't care where it ships to. I will send it to whoever. Right. So. Back to what I was doing. Right, so I don't know if you see my video a couple of weeks ago. I turned a yellow and black vase that um, I highly blackered. Oh, and bees. Bees. And uh, Nick said she'd like a red one. So that's what I'm going to do. Whether I get it totally oh, finished. I don't normally get what I want, but thank you. It's all right. Hello, Merry Christmas. I've been asking for something to go Merry, in my mm, yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas. Right, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to... 
shape it. I've already found the centers on both ends. Put a little tiny drill hole in it just for the what, look. What is it? Um, I think this is what I got from Michael. So I'm sure it's a piece of sycamore. I'm not 100% sure. But it's it's that got that paley, as you can see there, look. Paley, no grain texture, no, not, excuse me, not a pretty looking wood. So that's what we're going to colour it up. The blank size is, use my shadow foam tape measure. So it's 200 mil long by 100 mil, well, 100 by 92 square. So we're just going to rough it round, put a foot on the end so I can grab it in the chuck. And then we'll uh, go from, is that picture clear? Mm. Not quite, is it? Let's just focus that in again. I'll put my smock on. So, Nick can read out the chat. You want to read out the chat? Oh, you're going to let me talk now. <laughs> oh, right, good to. afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday Lunchtime Live. Um, first on was Wood Wiz Wizardry by Colin, Wood Turnham by Barry, um, Dave Reed, Pete from Twisted Trees, um, William. Kenny, we also have Lawrence, Radar the Wood Turner, wouldn't it be nice? Hi. Hey. Um, Doug Miller at Wood Spun Around. Let's just round this off. Mark the Gentleman Wood Turner's on. Hi, Mark. Mark. Brian at heart with turning. Brian. Um, Chris Dodds is on. Colin Izzard. Also, hello to Susie Swiss Turner. Hi, Susie. Um, she's not had a very good day because she's broke another bowl. Yeah, recently. I did read that. Need to give positive thoughts to her. All right, I will. I'm positively sure um, that you will you get it right. Quiet. That you will Brent get it right. Beecroft is on. Uh, Eric Winkler. Barry Wood Creation. Bailey Woodworks. Need to go back because the cat. Um, Todd at Glencove Woodworks. Dara's on. Terry Bartlett. Um, hello to Nick Castle. Barry Chitty. Benjamin's on. Um, so a lot of people have been saying about your intro. So yeah, he's changed it, but um, I think uh, he just he decided he doesn't need to actually shorten it. But yeah, Ben, he is advertising the other lives of what he does. Um, Terry Bray's on. Um, Archie, his name's Archie Scott, and he's from Scotland. Hi, Archie. Um, <laughs> they're all just commenting about your intro is too long. Uh, <laughs> door 60's on. I'll start um, at five minutes before the live starts. How's that? No, shorten it. Norman Greenwell's yeah, on. Yeah, but I can't get the information. He on said sure, yeah. he got him confused as to what day it was. Who's that? <laughs> Norman Greenwell. <laughs> Sorry, Norman. Um... Right, if I've missed anyone, my chat has jumped and it won't let me go back. So, again, um, <laughs> Ben, put, get off the toilet, Steve, and start your live. People are waiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Copper Al Wood Turnin's on. Rex B. Hi, Rex. Uh, Todd said, excellent job Friday night, Steve. Yeah, it was, it was good fun. It was good fun. It was a good atmosphere and it was a good laugh. 
Um, where did I see Rob CP's on? Hi, Rob. What I will do is I'll go, I'll um, give it a half hour and then we'll just go through the giveaway again just so. Yep. The Kim late... Dickerson's on. Chris, how are you doing? Just let um, the, the late comers in know what's going on. Joe Senior's on. Joe, how are you? Hope Glyn got sorted out. Dr. Bob's on. All right, so I'm just going to mount that in my chuck now. Trevor Reed is on. Klondike Craftsman's on. Hi, right, Lewis, how you doing? Did I say YV Woodshed? I think I have. I've said that many. YV Woodshed, if I haven't. There you go. Philip Moss is on. Uh, Malcolm Douglas. Uh, Trim this top up. Right. Susie's got a question. She said... Oh, is that what she said? So I was just reading something else. Um, for the giveaway of the awesome U Bowl, does Switzerland count as over the pond? Yes, you are over the pond. You're not in the UK. Uh, it's done it again. Christine and Michael Hessel times on. Hi, Christine and Michael. Hope you both well. Michael McEwen's on. Michael said, "Congrats, Michael McCoon said, congratulations on the um, three thousand Thank you. Tubs. You guys have helped me get well. You guys have got me there. Nobody else. All right. So I'm going to right. shake this. If, like I said, if I've missed you, um, oh, Roy's the boys on as well. Hi, Roy. Just shout because, like I say, it skipped a couple of times, so I'm not sure if I've got everybody, but." Welcome. Um, as you know, Steve's doing a 3,000 um, subscribers giveaway. Um, he's doing three lots of his new, some of the things that he's been designing for the Chuck, oh no, not the Chuck range, the Buddy range, sorry. Um, so anyone in the UK is willing to enter, they've got to put hashtag on this. No, in the world, not in the UK. Did I say, oh, I didn't say, sorry. Anyone in the world can enter. Um, and it's hashtag buddy range. Um, and you got they've got to put it in this video, haven't they? At the end, at the end of the live, the video will edit or yeah. process, and then you've got to put it in the comments after that so we can get all the names. And you're also doing a giveaway for the um live you. that you did the other morning. Um, for people that are not in the UK, basically. Um, and then they need to go over to that video and put what in? It's in the comments. It's in the description. Right. Okay, sorry. Not in this. Not, help. Yeah, I know, but I can't remember because it's quite a long one. Um, it's in the description for uh, Saturday morning's live we did. <laughs> Susie, you want to know what veg I'm cutting today? Well... I am doing some carrots and some broccoli, as always. Um, and But we're not having it today. It's for tomorrow because we're going out for tea tonight. So, um, Katie Shed is on. Said, good afternoon. Well done, Steve, Brian and Lewis. To early Sunday morning show. Really enjoyed the show. It's good fun. Good laugh. John Scarborough's on. Sorry, Hi, John. He said, I think you missed me, Nikki. But then I just may not have heard you. No, I didn't say you, John. I definitely knew I didn't say your name. Sorry. John Scarborough's on. Let's say the chat just jumped and I couldn't get back to it. So I'm just going to rough take this to start with. And then we'll go back and give it some uh, final...
some fine uh, dust coming off that. Yeah, there is. Turns nice, it's just really quite soft. You get one bit that's quite hard, and then the gal just sort of jumps into it. So I'm just using the quarter spindle gauge just to finish this off, really. I think it will be a bit narrow at the top. You can go get so many flowers to go in it then. I ain't got to buy the flowers anyway. I'm giving you the bowl, the vase, vase, whatever you want to call it. I want it. you to make me flowers. <sighs> Thanks, Brian. What, he ain't significant? No, he made blooming flowers, didn't he? And now everybody's got to make them. Oh, did he? I didn't see them. I'm just going to try and get a bit of shape on this. Oh, Richard Feelings on. Hi, Richard. Do you know what, Roy? I'd probably get them quicker if I got Brian to make them. I'll even go pick them up. <laughs> Any excuse for holiday? Mm -mm. I'm taking you. I'm good on you. <laughs> that's what I mean. Any excuse for a holiday? <laughs> Brian put, okay, that's okay, Steve, any time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to part that off in there with a the narrow parting tool. <laughs> this is finished. This printer. Yeah, we'll have to wait until finished. So just put a little round on there. You done gingerbread house? Sid's repurposing it on as well. Oh, right, Sid, how you doing, mate? Dara said you could 3D print the flowers. Yeah, I could. That's a good point, I don't know. Mark thinks that Brian should make everyone's partner's flowers. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that'll please Brian. Um, Steve, Roy said he's moved two thirds of that wood today, almost got his bench back. Ah, oh, good man. <laughs> Brian said, <laughs> what have you been telling them about me drinking? Brian said you'd be welcome, Nikki. Michelle's a really good drinking buddy. <laughs> I don't drink. Teetotal me. Yeah, right. Don't know what you're on about. <coughs> Can't believe you've been telling fibs again, Steve. I told you about that. Isn't it? I didn't tell them about the AA meetings you go to. Bless you. Ooh, bless you. Right, we're going to have to do some more then because I don't even know. Right, I think that's the shape we're going to go for. Nothing too fancy. It's a bit of darkness in there. A little bit of dark on that ground. So I'm going to sand that up to um, 400 grit. Do, 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 do. Sid said good day all. Getting late down and and. Uh, First time I've been awake for a live in a while, lol. Yeah, it's been a while since you've been in, mate. Good to see you. Roy said, I believe you, Nicky, not. He <laughs> <laughs> said, did I hear Brian say he was going to make flowers for everyone? <laughs> you did, Pete. So I'm going to sand this up to 400 grit.
What's that Glyn? He's a bad influence. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have phoned the um, the Premier Inn and told them that they need to get higher supplies of alcohol if that lot are coming down. Mm -hmm. Mark, we all know about you, Nikki. You drunk almost as much as Jennifer Strawton does, Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Woodwork learners in. He's put afternoon. Am I too late for the carrot chop? No, I was just going to start it, funnily enough. Funnily, don't talk about funnels. I'm actually just having a bit of a chill out. Yeah, the house was quite tidy and didn't need too much doing, really, did it today? Cause it's because you've been there all week. Done such a good job last week. And we've been on at the children because they're just tramps, animals. We have been on at them a bit. So. They make more mess now than what they did when they was five. Why are they such mingers, though? Why do kids think it's a good idea to leave? Dirty crockery and dirty clothes and oh, wet towels behind the bedroom door. And... So I think I'll do this with Abra now. It'll be easier, I think, rather than... Um... So Brian's just said, that's enough of the flower, Pete, or I'll be telling people about the mouse you turned. Mm. Wow. Oh, boy, said, what size is the wood? He missed the start. It was 200 by around about 100 square. Need a bit of 120 Abra in it. Just grab that. Do this with Abra in it, would be easier then. <laughs> Terry put, what, the one he cremated, Brian? <laughs> Woodwork Leonard said, was it still alive afterwards, Brian? And Pete said, you can tell them about the mace you made me turn if you want. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, boys, behave yourself. They're like old men in that <laughs> group chat, I tell you. So, mark your marks up this neck of the woods in this week. Yep. How long is he? What days? Monday night to uh, Thursday, I think. Just 120, 240. I'll just get new out because all this is all old stuff, I think. Well, you're welcome to come over here, Mark, and see us if you will fancy a jolly out. I don't know what the plans are. Oh. So, like I said, I'm going to sand this up to 400 because of um, we're going to colour it. Where's um, your blue paper towel gone? Um, it's on that edge of that. No, it's not gone. Oh, right. I don't know then. Um, look on the bench outside in the garage. 320. Cool. It's not funny, isn't it? Is it because you're out there or? <laughs> you're not funny. <laughs> So as we all know, if you're colouring, you want to spend a little bit of time just getting the surface right. So, um, Mark said uh, you may be able to silence Pete, but you've got nothing on me, big lad. Hashtag Brian to turn flowers for all. Um, <laughs> Roy's asking, what's the word? I don't know, Roy. I think it's a piece of sycamore, mate. I'm not sure. It's not got a lot of character to it, so it's nothing interesting. That's why he's in it for me. Oh, shut up. You're going to colour it anyway. Never happy. Never he, happy. You're always he always moaning. Said, um, there is no evidence left, just ashes. Barry said, Nikki, they will leave it now and you'll pick it up. Yeah, Steve can do that as well. What's that? I said to him this morning, I said, wash your 
the stuff on this table. He went, well, the fairies didn't come last night, did they? <laughs> he is good. He is pretty good. It's just the odd thing now and again. Um, like underpants, socks, trousers, t-shirts. No. <laughs> Brian said it's more about the treatment of the poor thing after you made it. <sighs> Barry's put, who's old, Steve? I am. Brian said, I wouldn't be so sure, Mr. Becker. I have informants everywhere. <laughs> Woodwork learner said, Mark, Brian hinted he might swap his vase for a chess set. <laughs> Doug's asked, Mark, did you do a gonk video? So... Eric's got a question. Go on, Steve, Eric. started my first epoxy colouring in my ironwood bowl. Yep. I used hot glue gun and cardboard to prep for pour. What is the easiest way to remove the glue and cardboard? Eat, heat or turn off? I just pulled mine off. I just got a small scraper under mine and just prized mine off. So just try that. I wouldn't heat it because if you heat it, that might soak into the timber better. Oh, that's smooth. That's nice, that is. So that's sanding out to 400. Very nice. So what I'm going to do now is going to hollow the middle out before I actually colour it. Why is it called toad in the hole? Sausage isn't made of toad. How do you know that? should be pig in a hole. Pig in a hole. <laughs> That'd go down well for vegetarians, wouldn't it? I'm having Why some pig in... Toad in the hole? I'm having some pig in the hole. Right, I'm going to turn out with a force in a bit, most of that. That's a good question, I do. So, force in the bit I'm going to use is... Let's have a look at what we got. Ooh, that looks about right. So let's put you on tail stock. Mark said it looks like tulip wood. I don't know what it is, to be honest, mate. It's like colour from Michael when we came down to yours. I just don't know if this camera will work. Because for some reason, when I plugged that other camera in, it made everything go hoo -ah. Let's have a look. No, she don't want to go. I'll have to have a look at that after the live. You won't. When you cleared oh. it, you've got to get in the show, mate. That one's... Oh, there we go. Mm. That one, that one, come on. Right, so... Turn that down a little bit. Pull this out. I've got no picture. Oh. Give it a chance to come back. Turn the extraction on and get rid of that smoke. Eric said thank you. I use lots of cardboard and glue. Yeah, just try peeling it off, mate. Wouldn't it be nice, said he had to pop out and get some refreshments for the rugby later on? Mark said it could be if it come from a uh, Michael in its tulip. Yeah, he had a lot be. of it. Oh, Philip Moss said he thinks it's tulip too. John Scarborough's got to go because his grandchildren have arrived. Hello, John. Actually, what I'm going to do, don't be a Neanderthal, Stephen. Go through with smaller sizes first. Because on the end grain, it's going to take a little bit of drilling out. So we'll go through. Oh, that stink. Smaller sizes to start with and then build it way up. Pete said, a bit slow, Steve. You're supposed to put a hole, not burn it. <laughs> yeah, it's because that's on the end grain and I'm trying to go through in one size rather than... Right, so always put, the origin of the name is unclear, but it may refer to the way toads wait for their prey in their burrows, making their heads visible in the earth, just like the sausages peek through the bath. Hmm. Oh, 
with dudes on. A very good sunny Sunday to all. Hi, Stephen. How you doing? Um, Richard Feeling said he's um, finally getting some t some shop time in. Good man. Good man. Next week is the hashtag week again. So we'll have another hashtag week. Um, Woodwork Learner said, Nikki, apparently the cook at the Golf and Hotel made the sausages look like toads poking out of the golf holes, hence toad in the hole. Hmm. Mark said, welcome to Burning with Steve. <laughs> Just call me the flaming aura. Brent oh. said, is it smoke or steam? Smoke. It was definitely smoke. Like I say, I should have gone smaller sizes, really. Which is what we'll do now, rather than trying to whack a two and a half inch bit straight through. Do, do, do. Let's go for that one. And then we'll do one more size over the, after this one before the digging. I thought he was going to talk about the giveaway again. Oh, I can do. Right, so, giveaway. Oh. You could talk about it. No, because you get me, turn me off because I say it wrong. And... <laughs> well, you turn me off and I keep on at me. and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, giveaway. So, as you guys may or may not know, that I've been making the, the Chuck Buddies for quite a while. Which is, if you don't know what a chuck buddy is, this is a chuck buddy. We use them to hold our chucks on the wall, screw our chucks to them. So, what I promised was I would give something away that nobody else has got. Only other than myself, Brian from Hartwood Turner, and Lewis, the Quandro Craftsman, have got them. And it's going to be, I'll put you on an overhead camera and show you. So, what I'm giving away is three sets three sets of these so jaw holder which is magnetic so only work with steel jaws unfortunately the axe minister jaws are stainless steel so it's not going to work with the axe minister jaws um, this will take any four inch well up to a four inch jaw um, so one of those the face plate holder and also a chuck buddy of your size now the sizes i do are m33 inch by eight inch and a quarter by eight three quarter by 16 I also now do uh, inch and a half by six and inch and a half by eight TPI. So I'm giving three sets of those away, but the first one that's drawn out, the first name that is drawn out the hat, will get other items as well, which are part of the buddy range. It won't be a hat. No, it won't be a hat. Probably auto generated, I think. So um, that's what I'm doing for the giveaway. We're going to put call the giveaway on the. Do we say the 13th of March? Yep which is two weeks today. And what you need to do to be within a chance to win is once this live has finished, you need to go over in the comments and leave a comment with hashtag buddy range. And then you'll be entered into the prize draw in two weeks time. And I will ship them. about the other one as well. I will ship them anywhere in the world. So anybody in the world can enter. And what I'll do at the end of the live, I will put the um, the information in the description. What about the other giveaway? So the other giveaway I'm doing is only to people in America or over the pond. No, I'm not going to say America. Anywhere in the world other than the UK. And it's to give away the, let me just pull this out and I'll show you. The bowl we turned on the early morning live on Saturday morning. I have added it to the description for the video, so if anybody sees the video, video they should be able to um, do it. 
So what I'm giving away is this stunning U bowl with a resin inlay in the back. Um, there was a big inclusion in there, bark inclusion. So I filled it with resin and we turned it out. Oops. And then a little bit of resin came through there, but not a lot. We didn't want no major amount of resin coming through. So yeah, that's what I'm. That's the and we'll announce the winner on that one. Um, on the next early morning live, which I think is going to be around about the 26th of March, our time. So 25th, uh, your time. So, um, Brian has said, can you tell him the hashtag week? Because he needs a project for tomorrow. <laughs> no. Sorry, Brian. It's your decision. It was your choice anyway, Brian. So you should know. <laughs> when are you doing that then? Oh, the next Sunday. Month. Next Sunday. <laughs> Right, so now we're um, off. Wavy Wood said, Wed, Woodshed said flowers for Brian. Um, Roy said, that's cheating, Brian, lol. Brian, Susie said, Brian, turn a basket full of wooden eggs. <laughs> Woodwork learner said, with that much smoke, you'd think Steve was using a laser to make the hole. Chris Dodd said, Hash, hashtag Chris said, Chess set, Brian. Um, Mark said, turn the Easter bunny, Brian, then I can have my revenge. Bid 16's on. Hi, right, Rich, how you doing, mate? You right? what you're making. Um, a vase, mate. Vase, vase, whatever you want to call it. And he's going to colour it as well. Um, Dr. Bob said, do you sell Chuck Buddies? I do. Yeah, he does. Dr. Bob. Klondike said, you can make resin eggs, Brian. Woodwork Learner said, that was a good looking bowl. Pete's put in the um, link for the Chuck Buddies, Bob, Dr. Bob. Thank you, Pete. Oops, I just knocked that camera. Uh, we've had this before, haven't we? Um, this wood. Wood Wizard Icon said, what is Paduk like to turn? And has anyone done a square bowl out of it? It's very dusty, isn't it, Paduk? Very dusty, I think. The beard said, um, it's really nice to turn. All right, so that's gone down. Jeff Crone is on. All right, Jeff. I'm now down to there, roughly. So that's deep enough. So I've got a little bit of weight left in the bottom there. So I've only got a little foot on there. So I'm just going to get the... Um, Simon Hope hollowing tool and just gently clean the inside of that up. Uh, which one do we want? Let's try this one. So I'm just going to gently clean up inside there. This is where I could do with that. Give me back camera. I don't know what's going on with this machine. It keeps taking ages to swap cameras. Shouldn't have rounded that other camera, but never mind. Is what it is, isn't it? Right, so let's just clean this out. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. I'm just going to use this just to gently clean this out. Apparently, Paduke causes a lot of orange dust. Yeah, it's very it takes dusty. Takes a while to get rid of. Yeah, it's a very dusty wood. I did a, I did a little square piece, and that was a blooming nightmare with getting rid of all the mess. Don't know if you can see that, or whether I'm in the way, but. Brian said, are you leaving a foot on the vase? Yes, I am. 
We're turning by Barry's got to go because he's gone to this year's dinner up. See you later, Barry. I'll message you later about coming over in the week, mate. Busy boy this week. Yes, this week's a bit manic. All well, this month. All oh. well, this month. It finishes well, on Monday, mate. Yeah, I know, but March is quite a busy month for us, isn't it? For some reason. Really? That's fair. It's next month that's the busiest. A couple of big birthdays. Need to apply for the daughter's provisional, really, don't we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Don't cry. Uh, <laughs> you can feel the money slipping away, can't you? Okay. <laughs> Not just on the driving lessons in the car, it's like the. The sanity. Yeah, just yeah, speed up a little bit. I want you to take her out for a bit as well. I was thinking that, funny enough, the other day about taking her out. Sid's gone as well. See you later, Sid. Um, Susie's got a question. Could you show the tip of your hollowing tool? Is it one of those tiny round plates? Sorry. That's a carbide. I'll give me one second, Susie, and I'll show you. Peeling the potatoes. And... Wouldn't it be nice? Said, what tool is that, Steve? It's a Simon Hope. I don't know. I think that's a ten mil. I think that's the ten mil carbide, or whether it's the twelve mil. It's the ten mil. It's a Simon Hope ten mil carbide. So it's a nice tool to use. So I'm just going to push this one down. We said, what wood did you say that thin bowl was? I didn't quite know, Roy. I don't know whether it's a, a popular or what it is, to be perfectly honest, mate. It's a um, very, very light colour, though. Something down the end there. What else down the end there? Keeps grabbing that. It's just because of the ingrain. Let's just see if we can get that cleaned out down the bottom there. <laughs> Barry's put wrong Barry, Steve. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Woodwork learner said, is that noise catches? Yeah, it's catching in the bottom there, mate. Because that's on ingrain. It's a bit... Oh, well, he said right. the one he showed you. Oh. Yeah, the little thin one on your bench. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I don't know, Roy. That's very, that looks like a popular to me, but whether it is or not, I'm not sure, because it's quite a light wood. Grandpa Jim's on. Oh, Jim, how you doing, mate? Right, so I'm just going to sand that. I'm going to try and leave that as a square edge on there. So I don't want to try and sand too much of that. So I'm going to start sanding that with a bit of 100 grit. Just inside there, as far as I can reach. I'm not going to ram my fingers all the way down there. Because I like them where they are. So just basically as far as I can reach safely. Just to take the... There's a couple of little ridges in there from the tool. Richard Feeling said he cleaned up his workshop yesterday and found his Simon Hope hollower. <laughs> I'm not quite that bad. I need to have a clear up in the garage. That's a mess in there. So I use the 100 to get rid of all the tool marks. And then we'll go up the other grits to finish it off. The fairies will come and do it. 
No, that is my plan over the next couple of nights or next couple of weeks in the evenings. Get in there and get rid of I need a skip here, really, to get rid of all the crud. I think if I get that kitchen job, I'll um, get a skip here. Because that kitchen can go in the skip as well, then. Alright, so. A bit more. said to Bex yesterday, Steve, would um, Dean dig a hole in the garden sink that trampoline in? <laughs> he said no. <laughs> what trampoline? Their trampoline? No, ours. Get rid of it. It's got to go. The net's all gone on it now. Alright, so a nice sharp edge on there. So I'm just going to finish sanding that up to 400 because I'm going to put some colour in there. So a bit of 120. I'm holding my sandpaper really lightly, so if it does grab, it's going to snatch it out of my hand and not take my hand with it. So it's 120. Boys, the boy said skip's not cheap. We have found some, and they're not too bad. Well, that's, yeah, they aren't cheap. Are they? They're not as cheap as they used to be. That's for sure. I used to get a eight-yard skip for like 140 quid. Now I can only get it. No, a 12-yard skip for 140 quid, sorry. Now I'm lucky if I can get an 8-yard for that sort of money. Um, Brian said, what, no roll-top edge? No, Brian, no roll-top edge. Him and these roll-top edges. No, sharp, crisp corners. Jeff said, it also catches easier because there's quite a distance between the tool wrist and the cutting edge. Am yeah. I right? Yeah, you are right. Long overhang. Good six inch overhang. Klondike said the, t the roll top is so last week, Brian. <laughs> yeah, move on, Brian. <laughs> so this is 400. Oh, Archie said, would art sell a little light which can put light down the vase? Yeah, I've got, I've got a light. Oops. See, that's why you don't hold on to your sandpaper. Because of that reason. If that was wrapped around your finger, that would have took your finger with it as well. So. That's so that's 400. I just want that nice sharp corners. Gives you a nice definition line. Right, so that's our vase cut and shaped and do for what we call it thing me Bob. So what we're going to do is do some colouring on it now. What colour do you want the inside? Black or do you want it a different colour? No, black. Black on the inside. Oh. Just get rid of this out of the chuck. So, nice and shiny, or nice and smooth, shall I say, not shiny. So I'm going to clean that with some methylated spirits. An overhead camera. Clean it with some meth, just to get, oh, just to get some um, grain, the um, dust out of the grain, really. Because what you'll find is if you don't clean the grain out properly, the... Um, when you put your colour on, that might open up a little bit and expose the white bits. I don't know what the hell that was. It sounded like one of Brian's mice. So that's that. Let that dry or evaporate, shall I say? Hi, Ruth. How you doing? Hello. John Crone said, I've seen some turners make up a sanding jig to stick with... Oh, sorry. To stick with the paper on the end. Kind of looks like a lollipop. Yeah, if I was using a real narrow, I'd cut a bit of dowel in half 
and then just put the paper in that. But because it's quite chunky, you can get your fingers in there safely. Klondike said Hobbit's digits are tough, though. <laughs> yeah. So let that just dry a little bit. While that's drying, I'll just put a couple of these tools away. Because we're not going to need them at the moment. That wood don't taste very nice. I told you to get something to eat instead of eating that. <laughs> I'm trying to be a good boy. I'm trying to have my wee bix in the morning. Do, 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 do. Is that dry yet? Not quite. It's taking a while drying them. I'll get the hot air gun on that just to dry it off a little bit. Got a bit of dark in there, I don't know why that is. Um, Colin said makes a nice change to see a foot on a vase. Yeah, I do like to see a little foot on a vase. Susie know... said... Go on. Go on. Go on. Susie said, Brian, you should turn a cat to go with your mouse. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Roy said, David J. He's the Guildford Cup, and that's because they know you got money in Guildford. Long... Oh, I didn't see who's on. David, the uh, Guildford Carpenter's on. Hi, David. So just de nibbing this, just to make it a little bit smoother, because the... Uh, the... Um... Miflated spirits just raises the grain just a little tiny bit. And so will the, the colour anyway, so. Alright, so. Werner said last time he tried to turn a cat, I scratched him. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So, just one red or do you want two reds? Do you want light red at the top and then feathered into dark red? Or do you want it all red? Do you want the black on the bottom? What? How would you like it? Earth to Nick. Earth I'm reading the it. chat, just wait a minute. Um, Pete said tulip is popular for having grey streaks in it. All oh, right, that must be what it is then. It's, it's got grey streaks in it, Pete. Right, what did you want No. Right, do you want this just red or do you want it black on the bottom? Do you want two reds? Do you want fade into do you want the light red on the top? You just can't tell me then. Well, I'm going to go flame at the top. Inside, you want black, don't you? Yep. Right, so flame at the top, feathered into ruby, feathered into black. And we put some colour in the gun, that always helps, doesn't it? Actually, I'm going to put some gloves on before I... End up with red stain all over my hands. You comfy, love? Sit there with your feet yeah. up. So just fill this up. Oh, actually, that's flame. Don't put don't put ruby red in the flame, Steve. That will mess it up. <sighs> Try that now. Oh, that's much better. Extraction on. So I'm just going to run the lathe slow. And I'm going to do that, leave that, I'm going to do that lip flame red. Then we're just going to bring that in. And I'm going to do the whole piece in this red. Because we're going to go with the darker colours. So we just uh, put that in a holder, just dry that off a little bit, get tissue in.
Give it a couple of coats so we get a nice deep red on it. So we got lives tomorrow. We have Terry on at lunchtime and then Brian tomorrow night. So make sure you come over and check those guys out. Terry's already put his link in for tomorrow. Oh, has he? Good man. Todd at Glencoe Woodworks has suggested have people having a look at Frank. Howarth, he's just posted a video for those unfamiliar with him. He does some amazing work. Nice. Mark Strawton's on. Good afternoon, Hi, guys. Mark was in our live on Sunday, on Saturday night. All right, so that's the flame red. So just dry that off. dry that. Let's have a see if it's dry. Yeah, nice and dry. So now we're going to go over to the ruby red. Just get my the breather. Conduct says Frank does some complex stuff. Brian's put his link in for tomorrow. So just going to unblock the little air, airway on there because they sometimes get blocked up in a restrictor die coming through. Right, so this is ruby red. Just make sure we get the ruby through it. Oop, too much. It's a fine line on this gun. There you go, that's better. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start from the bottom and get up to about there and then bring my brush away to give me that spray out. So I'm going to start on the bottom there, and then come in, and as soon as I get to roughly where I want it, I'm going to move the gun away to give me a feather dust. Now you won't see the real massive difference between the light and the dark, just that it looks like it's fading out into the lighter colour. Dry Doug that. Miller's got to go. He said he'll catch up later. See you later, Doug. Thanks for coming over. Shop dog workshops on. Hi, Mark. How you doing? He said he's sorry he's a bit late. He's in the workshop polishing his resin. Oh, well, that's your resin you're polishing, son. <laughs> Just got a, too much of a line there, but I can get rid of that on the next coat. It's not a transition, not a neat transition line there. It's like a band. All right, so let's give out one more coat. Just fill my gun up since the gun's nearly empty. These pots need washing out, they're a bit gunk up. So 
So what I'm going to do is last coat, I'm going to bring that a little bit higher on this one and try and feather that a little bit better. Because it's got like a band line in there. I want to try and get rid of that. Hmm. Over that brim thing. Like I said, these pots need washing out. Bring that out, set of feathers in, hopefully. Hopefully got rid of that band now. So nice when people come into the chat, everybody just says hello to them. Uh, the black, I'm only going to bring the black just over the um, the curve at the bottom there. Wood Dude said, remember, March is hashtag clean your airbrush month. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do clean the airbrushes. That's the tubs. They sit in there and they don't get used very often. Woodwork Learner said that looks better. I mean, the airbrushes I wash out every time. It's the pots that get clogged up. Let's just stop and have a look. So as you can see now, we've got that gradual fade in. We've got rid of that bandy line, which is nice. So we'll change over to black now. Yeah, I've changed my mind. I don't want that colour. I want blue now. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't be grumpy. I'm not very grumpy. I might have to go in a minute. I'm... You don't need to go. <laughs> Right, so, like I said, I'm just going to take the black so it's just over that arc. Cut a little bottom of my base, though. It's all about the base. <laughs> so just dry, I might need a couple of coats just to darken that right down. Just dry that off. Jeff Crone put, so clean your airbrush once a year. Got it. I'll set up my schedule. <laughs> no, airbrushes. He said you should use earth on the base instead of black. Yeah, he did say that on Brian's, but I do like that black effect. But I will try one with earth on. Woodwork learner said just buy more pots. <laughs> I, just, I just stick them in the sink and soak them, mate. The clean them, very clean them. Benjamin said, this is a Steve live. It's proper serious. No joking. <laughs> <laughs> we said I want a blue one as well now. <laughs> oh, I didn't see it very well last night. All right, so just another little bit on there. Nor did you, did you, mate? No, I was in bloody pain. He's hurt his knee and he don't know who. It's killing me. Even standing there is hurt. But hey ho, I'm a boy. I'm, I'll, I'll take it on the chin. Right, you take it on the knee. On the knee, yeah. I'll take it on the knee. It's blooming hot in here. I'm cold now, it's because I sat down. 
that I'm going to have to go for Jiminy, I'm afraid. I'm not even cleaning pedals up in here. Alright, let's have a look at that. Don't be frightened, just keep stopping and have a look. We've got a nice little feathering line now, which I like, going in through into the ruby, into the um, flame. So we've just got to do our black inside now. So we just do that. Woodrow, gonna... did I know how pain keeps you awake, Steve? And Terry says it's probably me kicking you in the night. No, I don't know what I did. I twisted my knee yesterday and I don't know how I did it. I've got so no not... camera. Yeah, they, they, for some reason, a massive delay on the camera changes today. I don't know why. I'm going to format this computer and reinstall it, I think. So I'm just bringing the black. So I'm just bringing it so you can just see the red going over the tip of the... Of the, of the edge. You can't really see it because this camera here don't work at the moment for some reason. <laughs> Reef said, was it Steve's snoring that kept you awake? Terry always does. Oh. No. Well, he got up and then the youngest daughter came in and said she'd been sick and oh, just I think I was awake every hour. Just draw that down there. Shop Dog Workshop said it's toasty in his workshop today. He's got the radiator and heater on. Yeah, I've got the heater on. When you're using the hot air gun and you've got the extractor going, that will generate heat, doesn't it? Philip Moss has got to go. He's got a um, pint waiting for him down the pub. See you later, Philip. Thanks for coming over. Let's just stop that and have a look inside that and see if it's black enough. Yep, I think so. So just dry off properly. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to scotch bright this just to take any um, fairy bits off it where the where the stain is going to, where it's swollen the grain a little bit. And then we're going to sand and seal it because um, obviously we, we want the, we want the colors to stay as they are. So yellow scotch bright. Oh, and keep on a yellow scotch bright. I'm taking my gloves off so I don't get them caught. Got to take this smock off. I'm sweating. So I'm just going to denib this because that would have swollen the grain just a little bit. Don't push on it really hard because you will scratch your colour. So I've just denibbed it. Just check it. Oh, I've got to go. Sorry, I'm back in a second. Oh. Okay. So there's our colouring. That's our colouring done. So I'm going to sand and seal that now. So what I'm going to sand them because if I use um, sand and seal with where I put on with a cloth, I'm going to blend all those colours in more than what I want them in. So I'm going to use spray cellulose sand and sealer just so we can seal them colours up. Just turn that down low, extraction back on. Let's give that a couple of coats so we can get a good seal on it. Right, another coat. Good thing because that stuff dries really quick, so you can see where the grain is porous. It's really soaking that up, and I really want it so that soaks into there really well. We might give that a couple more coats yet.
getting better with the more coach you put on it. It's really porous here. Draw for the hot air gun. I think that'll do. So that's where the end grain is. Obviously, it's just open grain, so it's just soaking in the sand and sealer. But it's all dry. So we'll just scotch bright that just to denib it. So that's our basic style and shape. So I'm going to put some embellishment wax over that now. And I think I'm going to go for... I'm thinking gold. Who reckons gold? Gold or silver? I think gold. Bronze. Bellish and wax. What colour? I said gold or silver. Um, Susie's come back with... Oh, silver. She come back with... Oh, she said bronze and silver. Gold, gold, black. Mm, I think if I put black on it because of the grain on it, you won't really see it, mate. Silver, gold, gold, gold. Pink or green. Oh, well, there's always one, isn't there? There's always one. <laughs> I think gold's the favourite choice, to be Say honest. Say bye to Roy and bye to... See you later, Roy. Yeah, I think gold is the favourite. So we're going to... I'm going to go gold. Let's say you won't see a lot of it. But it should just be enough just to go a little sparkle. on the inside as well. Make sure we rub it in really well. We know a lot of grain on this, so it's only going to get a minimum amount on it. So what we'll do is we'll just give that a second. Oh, Roy said he's not going yet. You're trying to get rid of my mate, oh, Roy, sorry. aren't you? <laughs> I thought he was going down the pub to watch football. All right, so. Let's buff it in. Bit of speed. No major pressure, though. Don't want to put loads of pressure on it. said if you spray lacquer on the inside would it be waterproof uh no i wouldn't have thought so because i would imagine the grain at the bottom is very porous i would imagine that would take a lot to to be honest they're more decorative than actually using so 
So just buff that off. Make sure you get all the excess off. Because obviously putting the coat of lacquer over the top of it, you will, I um, don't know if you can see that in there. Can you just see the gold? You can just see the gold flickering in there. Actually, I'll take it out and show you closer to the camera. I do apologise about the camera quality today, guys. It's not very good in there. I don't know why it's not very good. But you can just see the gold glimmering in there, a little bit on there, a little bit where there's a little bit of a inclusion there. But it's quite nice. Looks nice. So, now we're ready to put our final coat on it. So, as the other one did, um, I lacquered it, gave it several coats of lacquer. Then I'm going to do exactly the same on this one because I want that high shine on it. So, what we'll do is we'll put the first couple of coats on and then I'll build up over the weekend and we'll come back and finish it off next Sunday. Um, I'll show you how to polish it out how to get a nice shine on it, because obviously when you spray, because where the grain is swollen a little tiny bit, when you've put your colours on, you've got those little imperfections. So when you put your lacquer over, obviously it's going to cover the higher and the lower points at the same time. So you're always going to get that little bit of a bumpiness in it. But I'll come back and I'll show you how to cut it back so you get a perfect glass-like finish. So what I'm using on that is I'm going to use um, Halford's Clear Coat Lacquer because it's cheap and cheerful. Easy to get hold of. Um, you grow a great big can like that for about seven quid, I think. So make sure you, you, your lack is room temperature. If it's not room temperature, then just gently warm it up with a hot air gun like I'm going to. So I didn't think I was going to get this far, to be honest. So I didn't bother getting a lacquer out. Make sure you shake your lacquer well for a couple of minutes. You really want it to mix it up real. If you don't mix it properly, it won't settle properly and it, it won't um, adhere to the piece properly. Terry said, very nice job, Steve. Woodwork Learner said, looks great. Thank you. I do like colouring. Oh, I must admit... Guessed. What? We'd have never guessed. <laughs> I must admit, when I first if, when I first started turning, I, I thought colouring was a sin because um, obviously being a carpenter, um, I feel it's wrong that you're putting wood in and you're going to paint all over it. But after spending a bit of time talking to Martin at Maker Central and him doing it, watching one of his demos and he's saying that you're not actually covering the wood, you're just enhancing the, the wood. You're like, well, actually, that makes a bit of sense. And with a little bit of practice and a little bit of experience and a little bit of talking to people about different techniques and this that, and the other, you can come up with some nice, really, effects and You've only got to look across the community with some of the work that people do with current just to see how how nice a job that people can make. And it's all down to spend a little bit of time and not trying to whack it out in an hour and a half or a couple of hours. It's not going to happen. You just physically can't do it. And uh, it's the finish that makes the piece. If you rush that finish, then you might as well are not bothered with the rest of it. Don't matter how good that piece is. If you rush, rush the finish, it's never going to... Um, it's never going to work. So I'm just going to shake this up for a minute. While I'm shaking this up, we'll just do the, uh, we'll just talk about the giveaway again because obviously some new people might come in. So, as you guys know, 3,000 sub, 3,000 subs I've hit. So I'm doing a giveaway. What I'm doing is I'm doing um, these, the, I haven't released these projects at, uh, items yet these won't be released until the middle of march uh, end of march time um so at the moment these are all new not on the market so what i'm offering is three sets of these so you've got a jaw holder what we call the jaw buddy which is all held in with magnets again they won't work with um axe minister jaws because obviously axe minister jaws are stainless steel but what these are designed to do are so you put your jaw on it and they clip in place using the magnets so they're easy to access um, so I'm giving one of those away, the faceplate holder, which will take a four inch faceplate or it will take the faceplate you get with your chuck. I mean, your lathe, sorry. So that'll take that as well. And also the chuck buddy of any size that you require, because I know, I know not everybody's M33, but the chuck buddy is just designed for the chuck to screw on to like that. So, um, 
I'm giving one of each of those away. Like I say, the sizes I'm do, I do for the Chuck Buddies at the moment are M33, inch by eight, inch and a quarter by eight, um, three quarter by 16, inch and a half by eight, inch and a half by six. So they're the sizes that are available. Any size you can have, Chuck Buddy you want. Um, but like I say, the first one I draw out of the hat, I will be chucking in some of the other buddy range that I ha I'm going to launch later on in the year. So uh, there'll be a, a, an exclusive for someone to own some buddy stuff that's not even on the market. Well, none of us on the market yet. So to enter that, what you need to do for that draw, we're going to draw it in two weeks' time on the 13th of March. So what you need to do is you need to... At the end of this video, once this video has been processed, you'll be able to leave a comment. In the comments, you need to leave the phrase hashtag buddy range. I will go back and chuck it into the description afterwards. And uh, any, everybody who's left that comment, you haven't got to leave a comment as well, but if you want to, that's nice. Um, but everyone that's got hashtag buddy range on it, then I will enter into the competition. It's worldwide or the giveaway show, not competition. It's um, worldwide. Woodwork Learner wants to know how strong is the three quarter Chuck Buddy? Um, yeah, Roy's got one. I've, I've sold quite a few. They they work well. Um, I've not had any complaints yet. They're like anything, aren't they? Because they're plastic, as long as you don't cross thread them, obviously they're fine. But um, I've, I've, I've sold, oh, I don't know how many I've sold, hundreds. And I've not had any complaints of any of them yet. So hopefully um, everybody's happy with them. I mean, everybody who's bought them have said they're happy with them. And uh, that's all I can go by. Um, like I say, I've been using them. Um, Brian Hartwood Turner and Lewis. I sent Lewis some over to test as well. Um, we've all been using them. And we've all had, um, you know, no problems at the moment. Jeff, you've got to put it in. Yeah. The, um, let me see if I can bring a camera. I don't know if it's um, camera. Just quickly, Colin said um, that will the jaw um, hold a hold cold jaws? No, it's not that big. It's not, it won't hold cold jaws. So this is my, this is what I've designed. This is what I'm calling the buddy range, as you can see by the the um, image on the bottom here. And then what it is, is jaw holder, base plate holder, Morse taper two holder to hold your chuck um, and all your uh, stub centers, small tool holder, um, which is chuck keys, knockout bar, things like that. And then the chuck key holders, as you can see there. Um, the only things, I haven't launched any of these items yet. These all items are all in the process of being designed and tested. Um, I've been working on them a few months now. Like I say, the only people who have got them are myself, Brian Hartwood Turner and Lewis Golden of Quandro Craftsman. But um, before I launch them, I'm doing the giveaway um, to people for appreciation for my 3000 sub giveaway. So three sets of, um, there'll be a three sets of in each set, there will be the jaw holder, the faceplate holder, and then a chuck buddy of your choice, whatever size you require. Um, so that's what I'm going to weigh in. But like I say, the first name out of the hat, I'm going to be chucking in some other stuff that won't be launched until later on in the year. So. Um, yeah, that's how you spell it, Jeff. So. Shop Dog Workshop said he didn't have no, any, no issues with his. Um, Roy's got to go and pick his wife up. See you later, Roy. Thanks for um, it. Colin said they're brilliant. Mark Straughton said he's got six and they're fine. Yeah, they are. For being plastic, they're quite strong. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I do put them, I, they are really dense. I do increase the, the infill to make them really dense. So they are quite strong. And like I say, I've sold hundreds of them and I've not had any complaints of any of them yet. So hopefully they're going to be okay. Right, so... Let's get some lacquer on this. I'm going to do a couple of light coats to start with because you need your light coats to key to it. Um, if you try and bellow it with a real thick coat first, that'll just go a wall and just start dripping and everything else. So a couple of light coats to key with. And then I'll get a couple of free coats on it today and then we'll leave it till, because it's half past two now. So I normally only do an hour and a half, but we'll go a little bit longer just to get a couple of coats on there. Extraction on. So a couple of light coats just to get that to key. A little bit of warm air just to flash those off.
So make sure you turn your hot air gun on away from your piece so you don't blow dust and dirt all over your piece. And like I say, this is just to flash it off really so we can get a couple of coats on it. And what I will do over the next couple of nights, I will get about 15 coats on this just so we get a nice, deep, rich shine. So we'll just test that, make sure that's dry. Yep, that's dry. Barry's Wood Creation said, Steve, I'm almost identical to the one I did yesterday. I don't have an airbrush, so I applied colours with a paper towel. Yours looks so much better, mate. Great job. Thank you. Sorry, Barry, I didn't mean to copy you. <laughs> What you will find is as you put your layers on, several thin layers, you'll gradually see the shine increase. Don't get too close to your hot air gun because the, the lacquer will blister. So keep well away from it, be about a foot away from it and just gently warm air over the top of it. Colin says he likes the faceplate ones and has two faceplates, so I might invest in a couple once they're available. Oh, you need to wait and see if you win first, mate. You might win one. You never know. Everybody's got a chance. Ooh. That black has actually got, looks like a bit like a, a bronzy colour now of when that's spinning with that gold embellish and wax on it. So we just check, make sure we've got no dust or anything. What I'll do is I'll put three coats over it. Then before I apply any more, I'll go over with a scotch brite to denib it. Just to see if we can flatten out a little bit. So final coat for today. It's just starting to see that shine starting to build up now. After a couple of coats. A couple of thin coats just to seal it, really. And if you're going to lacquer, whatever you're lacquering, make sure you sand and seal it first, because if not, the lacquer will just soak straight into the grain. Are you reading the chat or what? No. I'm playing. Just gently drying that off. Let it have to spin for a little while. So, um, Graham Taylor, what speed are you spinning? I'm spinning at around about... I am looking really... Uh, around about 60 RPM, maybe a little bit lower than that. Between 50 and 60 RPM. See you later, Barry. Thanks for coming over. So let's just stop that and have a look. So you're just gently starting to see that shine build up, which is nice. So let that dry for the rest of today. And then um, we will gradually build, like I say, over the week, I'll gradually build up the depth of that shine. And then next Sunday, I'll come back and show you guys how to polish it up and buff it back to get a perfect glass like finish which would be nice so stick these back in the cupboard nice i like that i like how that just feathers in it's a little bit of a dark spot there for some reason i think it might be where the the grain is a little bit looser there. there's like a little dark spot there but 
I think got rid of that banding, but you can't really see where that fades into the, the red. It just sort of... Graham Taylor said it's always deceiving on screen. What's that? Or what speed you're spinning at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, was, it went very fast. It was about anywhere between 50 and 60 RPM. So, no, nice. Like I say, before I put another coat on, I'll just scotch bright that back, and then that, any dust or dirt stuck to it, that'll just wipe it off, and then gradually fill the... Don't push too hard with your scotch bright though. You mean, try and use um, the yellow one, or I've got some white ones. I normally use the white one in between coats, because um, that doesn't give you... That won't scratch it too much, so... A bit, it should be okay. Um, woodwork learner said you need to make a separate device to spin slowly to free up your lathe. <laughs> no, I'll just take the chuck off, mate. I've got another chuck, so I'll just change the chuck and then just screw the chuck back on when I'm... Uh, Malcolm when Douglas I'm... said very nice, Steve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, so let's bring you guys back onto camera. These cameras are bugging me. I don't know why they're playing up. There you go. <laughs> Do you know what? You can come in here 455 or 499 times. The computer runs sweet as a nut. That 500th time, it plays up like a woman who wants attention. But anyway, that's it for today. Um, I apologise that I've gone over the hour. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise I've gone over the hour and a half. Um, but it's taken a little bit longer than I expected, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, so please, everybody who wants to, please, everybody enter the competition. You know, what I mean, it's open to everybody in the world. Um, it's just a way to say thank you to everybody who supports the channel. And um, um, your support means the world to me. You know that. Um, like I said, all the time, without you guys, I wouldn't be here. I really wouldn't be here. Um, so a massive thank you. And like I say, have your chance to win a set of these. Go over and. Um, end of the competition you never know you might be lucky like i say three sets to give away so you've got a good chance and like i say anywhere in the world and like i said from the start for the first prize i'm going to chuck in some other goodies as well so they'll be worth having i think um especially if, you know i mean i think they're good you mean look how tidy it looks it's it, it just tidies everything up they're all out of the way they're exactly they're just easy accessible just gradually warm off um so yeah it's, you, you mean take them you know i mean i'm giving them away so be good. Um, if you do want Chuck Buddies, then they are available on my Made Me store. I think Pete put the link in a little bit earlier. Um, if you want, if you want, if you're interested, message me. And like I say, I do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different sizes now. Started off with the M33s. From a, actually, I just designed them for myself originally, but um, other people wanted them. So, so six sizes available. M33, which is the most popular for the UK inch by eight, inch and a quarter by eight, um, three quarter by 16, inch and a half by six and inch and a half by eight. The inch and a half six and inch and a half eight are the new ones I'm going to put on my stall this week. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks to get those to the threads quite right on those, but I've got it now. So hopefully they'll be perfect. So like I say, massive thank you for coming over and joining myself and Nick really do appreciate it. Um, don't forget to leave the comment in the video and, uh, I'll see you guys most probably in the week. Uh, don't forget, you got Terry tomorrow for a live on his channel. He's put his link in earlier in the day. And then we um, have um, Brian at Hartwood Turner, both excellent turners. Uh, if you haven't been over and checked either of their channels over, then please go over and check their channels out. And make sure you subscribe to the channels because they are both awesome turners. So other than that, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, have a great week. Nick's going to say goodbye having a good week and if i don't see you before i will see you next friday um no i don't think we've got a special guest there well no i don't think i think that's the week after but i will stick the link up anyway guys take care speak to you soon and bye for now have a great week bye bye that's all folks